What if I told you that the 33 Raptor engines under the Super Heavy Booster, the engines most people think fire together in one giant chaotic roar, are actually performing a carefully choreographed routine? And here's the twist. The engines on the outside and the engines in the center aren't just placed differently, they actually behave differently, fire differently, and serve completely different purposes. And if they all acted the same way, Starship would probably never leave the launch mount. By the end of this video, you're going to see Super Heavy's engine layout in a totally new way. And you might also understand why SpaceX engineers sometimes say that Starship isn't one rocket, it's two rockets welded together, each with their own job, each with their own engine strategy. All right, let's dig in. Under the Super Heavy booster, you have the famous 33 Raptor engines. These aren't 33 identical engines all doing the same thing. They are split into two categories, 20 outer ring Raptors, known as the Boost Raptors, and 13 center Raptors, often referred to simply as the center cluster. And here comes the part that surprises a lot of people. The outer engines do not steer at all. They are locked in place completely fixed. They push straight down and only straight down. In contrast, the center engines, the inner 13, are the ones that do all the steering, all the precision control, all the orbital finesse, and all the landing work. If you've ever wondered how the world's most powerful rocket manages to not tip over on liftoff, or how it turns, or why it doesn't snap itself apart when its engines light, well, this is where the magic begins. Let's start with those outer engines. The 20 engines around the perimeter of the booster are designed with one primary purpose, raw, brute force lift. These engines provide most of the thrust needed to haul the 120 meter tall Starship stack off the pad. And when they kick in, they are delivering insane levels of power. The entire booster generates more than 7,500 metric tons of thrust at full throttle, more than double the thrust of the Saturn V. So why not give the outer engines steering capability? Wouldn't it be safer if every engine could help control the rocket? You'd think so, but no. And the reason is one of those beautifully simple pieces of engineering wisdom. Just because you can add complexity doesn't mean you should. The outer engines are positioned so far from the center of the booster that even a tiny steering movement, a tiny gimbal angle, would create enormous twisting forces on the entire rocket. Imagine using a long wrench to twist a bolt. The longer the wrench, the more torque you generate with very little effort. That's exactly what would happen if the outer engines gimbaled. The booster would experience huge rotational forces, potentially bending or snapping structural components, or at least forcing SpaceX to add massive amounts of reinforcement and weight. By locking them in place, SpaceX avoids those huge torques, keeps the booster lightweight, and maintains reliability with fewer moving parts. Fixed engines are simpler. Simplicity is reliability. And reliability is everything when you're igniting 33 engines simultaneously. But that introduces an obvious problem. If all the outer engines are fixed and can't steer, who does the steering? This is where the center engines show up, like the heroes of the story. The 13 center Raptors can gimbal, meaning they pivot slightly to direct their thrust. Each one can move independently, giving the booster fine grain control over pitch, roll, and yaw. These center engines are the booster's entire steering system during ascent. They tilt the rocket into its gravity turn, they counter winds, they correct for the loss of an engine, they stabilize the stack during the wild rumbling moment right before stage separation. In other words, they are the brain while the outer engines are the muscle. And here's the part that becomes even more interesting. The booster does not light all 33 engines at the same instant. It lights up in a sequence with the outer engine starting first. This staggered ignition spreads the thrust across the huge base plate and avoids creating a concentrated blast that might damage the launch mount or the rocket itself. Only after the booster stabilizes do the center engines ignite, giving the vehicle full control authority right as it begins to leave the pad. It's a controlled chaos, and it works beautifully. Now let's move into something most people misunderstand, landing. A lot of people assume the booster might use all its engines again on the way down. After all, Falcon 9 uses three engines to slow down and one engine to land. So why not super heavy? 
because the outer engines, the ones that give the booster that monster liftoff thrust, are basically useless during landing. In fact, using them would almost guarantee a crash. Think about this. Landing a 70-meter steel cylinder requires extreme precision. You need engines that can throttle deeply, engines that can steer, engines that can react within milliseconds. Outer engines can't do any of that. They can't gimbal, and they don't throttle as deeply as the center engines. A single degree of misalignment on a fixed outer engine during landing would create a sideways push strong enough to topple the booster instantly. And here's an even more important point. Outer engines don't have restart capability. They're designed to fire once, at liftoff, and that's it. Restarting them would require additional systems, plumbing, weight, and complexity, all for an engine that would fire for a couple seconds at best. Not worth it. So for landing, SpaceX relies exclusively on the center engines. These engines can restart, they can throttle down to incredibly low power levels, and they can gimbal to keep the booster perfectly upright. During the boost back burn, SpaceX typically lights three center engines, using them to reverse the booster's horizontal momentum. Then later, after the booster re-enters the atmosphere and survives a dramatic, high-speed, belly-first plunge guided by giant grid fins, a single center Raptor typically lights for the final landing burn. Only one engine is used, because using multiple would make precision extremely difficult. The booster must slow down just enough, just in time, but not too much, not too early, and it must do it in a way that lets it hover for just a moment before touching down. That requires deep throttling, something the outer engines cannot do. So now you're seeing the pattern. Super Heavy's engines aren't just placed where they fit. The layout is the result of a very intentional division of labor. Outer engines, maximum thrust for a few minutes, one job, one ignition, one direction. Center engines, precision control, multiple restarts, deep throttling, steering, boost back, landing. It's just fantastic engineering. Now, let's talk about the moment everyone watches, stage separation. When Starship separates from the booster, only the center engines are still running. The outer engines have already been shut down. Why? Because the upper stage performs something called hot staging, where its engines ignite while still attached. To protect the booster, there's a giant vented separation ring that lets the hot exhaust blow through. If the outer engines were still running during this moment, the exhaust from Starship above plus the massive lateral plume from the booster's outer ring would create total chaos, turbulence, shockwaves, structural stress, all extremely dangerous. Instead, SpaceX uses only a handful of center engines. Their thrust is tightly controlled, their steering precise, and their exhaust path is cleanly directed. Once Starship lights its engines, the booster immediately shuts down its remaining center engines and begins its flip maneuver. And again, the steering authority during that flip? Grid fins plus the center raptors. Outer engines have done their job. They rest for the rest of the flight. Now, here comes a deeper insight into why this matters for humanity's long-term future. Starship is meant to fly a lot. Rapid reuse, high cadence launches, possibly daily launches. Outer engines being simple, non-gimbling engines means they're easier to inspect and turn around quickly. They don't have complex actuators or throttle components. They're basically built to be powerful, reliable, and low maintenance. Center engines, meanwhile, are the complex ones, the ones that need frequent checks, precise calibration, and strong hardware for gimbling. By keeping these specialized engines limited to the center, SpaceX avoids turning the entire bottom of the booster into an engineering nightmare. This design also scales beautifully for future upgrades. SpaceX can push outer engines to higher thrust levels, maybe even future Raptor 4 variants, while keeping center engines tuned for precision. Or they could increase the gimbal authority on the inner engines without modifying the outer ring. It's a modular, elegant approach. And this is where things get exciting for future missions to the Moon and Mars. On the Moon, on Mars, and during orbital burns, Starship relies on engines that can restart, throttle deeply, and steer accurately. The same qualities as the center raptors on the booster. 
the outer engines simply wouldn't be useful outside Earth's liftoff conditions. So SpaceX isn't wasting engineering effort trying to make those engines do jobs they were never meant to do. They're designing engines like chess pieces. Each piece has a role. None is redundant, none is misplaced. By dividing the engines into two groups and giving each group a specialized job, SpaceX unlocks reliability, efficiency, and reusability, while keeping the booster as light and as simple as possible. It's one of the smartest decisions in the entire Starship architecture. And look, we're still early. Booster 10, 11, 12, they're all iterating. SpaceX is constantly improving throttle response, ignition reliability, insulation, gimbal actuators, and engine control algorithms. But the core idea, the split between outer boosters and center engines, is here to stay. It's too efficient, too elegant, too effective to abandon. Next time you watch a super heavy launch, Pay attention to the engine plume. You'll see the outer engines forming this wide, beautifully symmetric column of fire, and the center engines flickering with tiny variations as the rocket steers. Two completely different personalities working in perfect harmony. It's almost like watching a symphony. The outer engines are the percussion section, loud, powerful, driving the rhythm, while the center engines are the strings and brass, shaping the path, guiding the melody, making sure the music stays balanced. So now when someone asks you, why do the outer engines and center engines behave differently? You'll know that the answer is everything. Structure, stability, control, reliability, landing, reuse, cost, and the entire future of rapidly reusable heavy lift rockets. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Super Heavy's engine choreography, make sure you like this video. It helps more people discover the channel. And if you're new here, subscribe to the Rocketry channel for more breakdowns just like this. And don't forget to follow Rocketry on Facebook for daily updates and behind-the-scenes coverage. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.